Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're featuring the Dodge Charger Pursuit in my History, Major Flaws, and Why It Got Cancelled series. This has been a popular series I've done over the years, where I look at the history of the car, the issues it had, and why it got cancelled as the title suggests. By the way, these are meant to be more of a tribute for each vehicle, as opposed to negatively looking at the cars. The Charger Pursuit has been around ever since the return of the 6th generation Charger in 2006, and now that the Hemi powered Chargers are being discontinued, and things are a bit up in the air regarding the future of these cars, the Pursuits are gone with them after 2023. That's not to say they won't be back, either in EV form, or with the newer 3 liter twin turbocharged Hurricane engines, that are now making their way into the Jeep Wagoneer, Grand Wagoneer, and the new 2025 Ram 1500s. After all, a company like Ford is selling their Mach-E to police fleets. Before we get into the video, I want to talk about today's sponsor, World of Warships on PC. If you aren't familiar with them, World of Warships is a free-to-play naval warfare-themed multiplayer online game where players can battle others at random or versus the environment with seven different battle types to choose from in total. You can try out World of Warships by using the first link in the description. During your registration, use the promo code HSF2023 to receive a huge starter pack including 200 doubloons, 1 million credits, 7 days of a premium account, and 2 high school fleet commanders. You'll notice the game has stunning graphics displayed on over 40 maps with dynamic weather, water effects, and textures. The weather effects will make each battle unique and change the tactics of the battle. World of Warships releases new content every month in the form of new ships, in-game nations, cosmetics, or even ship classes, so you can always count on enjoying updated and refreshed content. The ships are designed based on historical documents and actual blueprints from the first half of the 20th century, and there are over 20 ports to choose from, with 10 of them recreated based on historical harbors and port towns. There's also cool themed collaboration bundles and combat missions that relate to characters like Transformers and Popeye. The newest in-game event collaboration is with the popular High School Fleet anime series, which you can see on screen now. If you're not much of a PC gamer, World of Warships is also available on consoles as well. Once again, make sure to try out World of Warships by using the first link in the description, and use the promo code HSF2023 when registering to receive a huge starter pack with 200 doubloons, 1 million credits, 7 day premium account, and 2 high school fleet commanders. Sponsors like this help to give me the flexibility and freedom to keep making videos, so once again, thanks to World of Warships. Now back to the video. There are three main versions or generations of the police car, so we'll go in that order. As we know, the Charger made its modern day return in 2006. Daimler Chrysler released a police version of the Charger as well, first debuting at the 2005 New York International Auto Show, and the production began in the fall of 2005 at the Brampton Assembly Plant in Canada. From 2006 to 2010, two versions were offered, simply a V6 and a V8. The police cars never had any trim levels like SXT, RT, and SRT8 on the civilians. These were simply called Dodge Charger Police. The fleet price for a fully loaded Charger V6 in 2006 was $26,575, while the Hemi versions rose up to $28,805, although there would be discounts offered from Dodge if a department ordered more than 5 cars. Across the US, the V8 models made up approximately 75% of the sales of the first gen, while the other 25% had the V6s. Most police agencies that drove on the highway a lot would purchase the Hemis, while only those that had officers patrolling big cities would buy the V6 models. These obviously looked like the regular chargers, just with the police add-ons, like decals, lights, push bars, and different wheels to name a few things. There were also squad car versions, which were more for undercover or unmarked use, and the police versions looked more typical. In the middle of 2008, Dodge also added a street appearance package for the undercover officers, so those were the squad cars, but they had SXT badging, regular fog lights, and normal street trim that you'd see on a regular SXT model. Dodge did offer some exclusive non-civilian colors over the years, like tan, medium brown, electric blue, and midnight blue. Inside the seats are a bit different as they have cutouts in the side bolstering for utility belts that officers wear, and they still come with side airbags. So there was never any fancy leather or suede offered, just black cloth or vinyl. Some people think the police cars are faster or more powerful to chase down criminals, but these engines are nothing new when compared to the regular Charger. V6 police cars get the 3.5 liter V6 with 250 horsepower and 250 pound-feet of torque, while the 5.7 liter V8 Hemi cars came with an output of 340 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque from 2006 to 2008. The Hemi was upgraded for 2009 and onwards in many different ways, with variable valve timing, 
crankshaft structural upgrades, a dual mass crankshaft dampener, floating pin piston design, valve spring design change, and oil pump capacity increase for the VVT. So on the police models, the horsepower went up by 28 to 368, and the torque went from 390 to 395 pound-feet. You can see the performance I'll post on screen, where I took the numbers from the annual police vehicle evaluation program done by the Michigan State Police Department, and they've done this every year for as long as I can remember. The V6 0-60 was around 8.5 to 8.8 seconds, with a quarter mile time in 16.6 .6 to 16.8 seconds, and a top speed of 135 to 137 miles an hour. The V8 could do 0-60 in 5.8 to 6.4 seconds, quarter mile in 14.3 to 15 seconds, and hit a top speed of 146 to 150 miles an hour. As for some other specs, the gas mileage is rated at around 17 city 25 highway for the V6s, and 15 city 23 highway for the Hemis. Both models came with a 5-speed automatic with manual auto stick mode, heavy duty brakes and linings, electronic stability program with emergency brake assist, all speed traction control, and 4-wheel anti-lock brake system. Both the front and rear rotors are 13.7 inches, so the V6s could stop in around 130.1 feet, and the V8s in 133.5 feet using 2006 numbers. Standard features on the first gen included things like a severe duty cooling system, police performance tuned steering, and the shifter got moved to the steering column for more space in the center console. In that center console, Dodge added an aluminum plate for mounting radio equipment, computers, sirens, and other equipment that police might use. The electrical system is also specifically designed to be able to handle all the sirens and lights that the police need to use. Dodge also added the ability to see engine idle hours and total operating hours. Some slight but important changes over the years will be posted on screen, but I won't go over them. The Charger police cars made their second gen debut with the 2011 models, and this generation would last until the 2014 model year. These Chargers had both exterior and interior changes like the civilian versions. The body shape changed, the fascias and hoods were redesigned, the taillights got a racetrack style design that extended over the whole rear of the car, and there was a refreshed interior with a different dashboard and layout. The cop cars were officially renamed to the Dodge Charger Pursuit, and just like the first gen, there's just two versions, a V6 and a V8. The fleet price for a Pursuit V6 Charger in 2012 started at around $21,949, so that was good for fleets that were trying to save money. That was one of the cheapest cop cars available, undercutting the cheapest Ford option by $790. The price for the Hemi Pursuit Chargers started at $23,585, so both the V6 and the V8 were over $5,000 cheaper than the comparable civilian Charger version. And the optional street appearance group returned for officers that do more undercover work, with some regular features like fog lights, aluminum wheels, and a standard center console. You'll see the long list of standard equipment on screen, which includes things like load leveling performance suspension that is much stiffer than civilian versions, heavy duty vented disc brakes, emergency brake assist, bigger front and rear stabilizer bars, 18 inch performance tires on steel wheels, a two mode police specific electronic stability control calibration, 160 mile per hour speedometer, and a lot more. Inside there's a police interface module with police duty front seats, the column mounted shifter, red and white LED lighting for night vision equipment, a stealth mode, and more. And there's also tons of safety features too, like advanced multi-stage driver and front passenger airbags, seat mounted side thorax airbags, supplemental side curtain airbags for front and rear passengers, driver's knee bag, and more. So there's lots of airbags anticipating that officers might hit or get hit a lot. Looking at the performance, the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 engine made 292 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque, with an estimated 19 city and 27 highway MPG. There was also optional E85 flex fuel capability. The 5.7 liter Hemi had 370 horsepower and 395 pound-feet of torque, with gas mileage rated at 16 city and 25 highway MPG. Both the models still got paired with a 5-speed automatic, and they had a dash-mounted shift lever and 13.7-inch rotors all around. Only rear-wheel drive was offered at first with a 2.65 to 1 rear axle ratio. Optional rear axle ratios of 3.07 for the V6 and 3.06 for the V8 were added in 2012. The performance was a bit better here than the first gen obviously, with the V6 is able to do 0 to 60 in 7.5 to 7.7 seconds, the quarter mile in around 16 seconds, and hit a top speed of 141 miles an hour. The Hemis did 60 in 5.8 to 5.9 seconds, quarter mile in 14.5 to 14.6 seconds, and topped out at 149 to 152 miles an hour. In 2014, Chrysler finally added an optional all-wheel drive system, 
but that could only be had with the V8. They said they were in no rush to add all-wheel drive over the years due to a lack of demand. And they also added a BR9 brake package with way bigger 14.5-inch front rotors. Moving on to the more recent Charger pursuits, just like the regular cars, they got the facelifts with the updated exterior and interior, and of course they were offered from 2015 until 2023. I'm not sure the reasoning, but Dodge had a V6 rear-wheel drive and a V8 rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive from 2015 to 2019. In 2020, they then had the V6 rear-wheel drive and V8 all-wheel drive only. But then after that, from 2021 to 2023, they switched it up and offered the V6 all-wheel drive and V8 rear-wheel drive only. As for cost, the starting price for 2020 models is around $32,745 for a V6 and $36,795 for an all-wheel drive Hemi. For 2015, 60% of the Charger Pursuit sales were still Hemi V8 models, while 20% of those Hemis had all-wheel drive. And for 2022, the V6 Pursuit started around $37,000 and the V8 was around $39,000. As for the exterior, the 2015 Pursuit gets the same visual update as the regular Charger did, lower and sleeker grille and hood, relocated C-pillar, and revised rear racetrack taillight. Of course, there's also a push bumper, A-pillar spotlights, built-in wigwag lights, new LED daytime running lights, a roof-mounted light bar, rear decklit emergency lights, and custom wraps available directly from Mopar. The Pursuits are available in many of the regular civilian colors, but they also get some exclusive colors like bright silver metallic clear coat, electric blue pearl coat, midnight blue pearl coat, Michigan State Police blue, ranger clear coat, sheriff's tan, and white gold. And those colors would vary over the years. For performance, there weren't many changes at all as the same engines continued. The 2021 to 2023 V6s are all-wheel drive, so they did get 8 more horsepower and 4 more pound-feet of torque to 300 and 264. One interesting thing is that while the civilian versions got an 8-speed automatic transmission, standard on all models starting in 2015, the Pursuit still used the 5-speed auto with the column-mounted shifter until 2020. Finally, in 2021, the 8-speed automatic became standard on all the Pursuit vehicles as well. For other specs, the V8 has a 220mm rear axle, while the V6 all-wheel drive gets a 230mm one, and the rear axle ratio is 3.07 on the V6 and 2.62 on the V8, and those might vary, but I'll post those in the charts if they do. The 2023 V6 models can do 0-60 to 60 in around 7.4 seconds, while the V8s are good for 5.9 seconds. Standard features included your typical heavier-duty parts, like performance-tuned electro-hydraulic power steering with a fluid cooler, a 220-amp alternator, 800-amp battery, bigger front and rear stabilizer bars, and one-piece lower control arms on the V8 all-wheel drive, to name a few things. The officer protection package was added standard as of 2017, designed to increase officer awareness when parked, as the Charger uses the ParkSense rear park assist system, the ParkView rear backup camera, and the rear cross path detection to alert the officer if there's a movement or person behind the vehicle. The sensors will activate, sound a chime, all the doors lock, front windows roll up, and the taillights start flashing if there is. Inside the basic screen is a 7-inch display, but in 2016 they did add the option of the 12.1-inch Uconnect screen, which will also add more buttons and better allow for connecting laptop systems. Both the Uconnect systems are more robust than civilian versions, as they are engineered and tested to work with the officer wearing gloves, and in extreme conditions like minus 40 Celsius or 85 degrees Celsius. Finally, here's a list of updates the newer Pursuits received, which you can read on screen. Now we can go over some general info like sales and who uses the Charger Pursuits. Mopar website allpar.com did post sales numbers for the first couple of years, so to start at a higher level, for the first year in 2006, there were 2,500 cars purchased, and that went up to 8,000 for 2007 and 10,000 for 2008. Usually the first year is where the police departments will order a few cars to test them and see if the car is performing to their standards, and then they'll order more. So as we can see, the sales quadrupled within three years. But after that, I haven't been able to find much data on the sales, but at least it does give us the rough idea that there are probably around five to 10,000 of these sold per year on average. Next, let's take a quick look at which police stations chose the Charger Pursuit over the competition. This is by no means a final list, and there is no way of knowing every single department that uses them. The Charger was a popular choice for many fleets, being used in many American and Mexican police organizations, as well as the U.S. federal government and military police. As of 2013, 
Over 20 states had signed up to use a charger, including Arkansas, Colorado, California, Florida, New York, Idaho, Kansas, Michigan, Dallas, and Washington to name a few. 18 others were with Ford, and the rest either unknown or mixed. In Canada, they are used in Alberta, Ontario, Montreal, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and PEI. Going more international, law enforcement agencies across the world include Chile, Czech Republic, Bahrain, Kuwait, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. One other interesting fact is that apparently NASA ordered one Hemi Charger to be a chase car, driving alongside their ER-2 Earth Resources aircraft to help ensure for a smooth landing. So there's a pilot in the Charger that helps to assist with the landing and goes over 120 miles an hour almost every time. This goes down at the Armstrong Flight Research Center in California. So that'll bring us to the next part of the video, looking at the reasoning for the cancellation and the flaws of the Charger Pursuit, as we do for all vehicles in this series. So Dodge CEO Tim Kaniskas had been hinting towards going in a new direction with the Dodge Charger and Challenger for a few years, and the official news came during the first day of Dodge Speed Week on August 15th, 2022, where he said, quote, The 23 model year, Chargers and Challengers will be the last of the Hemi-powered L cars that we build. When that window closes, there's no reopening it. Production ends December of 23. You need to get your orders in now or never, because when the last Hemi Chargers and Challengers roll off the line at Brampton, it's going to be the end of a legendary era. And it's hard to believe, but that 20-year run in Brampton unleashed nearly 3 million Dodge muscle cars to the world. That's a billion horsepower off the line and straight to the streets. So, of course, the end of the civilian Chargers mean an end to the Pursuit Chargers, at least in their current form. So that's the reason for the police Chargers going away. I did talk more about why Dodge felt the need to discontinue these Chargers in my Dodge Charger History Major Flaws and Why It Got Cancelled video, so check that out for more info if you're interested. But the reasons included internal pressure from Stellantis, compliance and environmental regulations, and the fact that Dodge believes they can enhance their performance and go further with electrification. So now we'll go over some issues and flaws that these cars had over the years, obviously focusing on the police cars rather than chargers in general. The first gen version seemed to get rave reviews, but also they did get replaced fairly quickly after like 4 years, so that could also mean that many agencies didn't use them long enough to develop problems if they upgraded to the 2011 and up versions. The one major problem the fleets had was with the brakes wearing down way too quickly. Chrysler wanted to have the best braking performance when compared to their rival Chevy and Ford, so they used a high performance pad with a hard bite. Unfortunately with that brake pad performance came more brake dust, more noise, and most importantly a much faster wear time. State departments were complaining to Dodge that they were having to change their brake pads out every 4 to 8,000 miles, so this was a major issue for the 2006 to 2008 models. But around 2008, Dodge changed the pad design, and they used a different compound that extended the pad and rotor life and reduced the noise. The performance did get a bit worse, so that was a trade-off. Moving on to the second gen, there were 9,688 2011 and 2012 pursuits that were recalled for a lightning harness connector overheating, and causing the low beams to fail. 127,350 Dodge Chargers were also recalled, some of those being the police cars, for the power distribution center overheating and causing a loss of anti-lock brakes and stability control system. Many officers had issues with the aftermarket packages and options that Mopar offered, claiming that there were long delays to get them and the gear was squeaking and rattling like crazy. Another thing that some officers complained about was the ride quality, which has to do with the suspension and tires. The Pursuits had a firmer and harsher feel over the civilian chargers, but there were reports that these cars had jitters, shakes, and an uncomfortable ride. The cop cars also got Pursuit-rated tires, which have reinforced inside and outside shoulders for various police maneuvers, like crossing a median or going over curbs, and officers found there was a ton of road noise and a very uncomfortable ride with the Pursuit tires. Both the suspension and tires are of course helpful for the different tasks that officers have to go through, but I can understand a rough ride would get very annoying when someone is driving all day long. Another annoyance for many was that Dodge didn't put the 8-speed autos into the Pursuits until 2021, when meanwhile it was in some V6 cars starting in 2012, and in all the civilian chargers for 2015. Dodge claimed that the officers preferred the tried and tested 5-speed autos, but the 8-speed auto would benefit with better performance and gas mileage, while having virtually zero downsides. Finally, the 2009 and up Hemis had an issue where the Eagle motor has a ticking noise that's caused when the lifters are faulty and can stick or get stuck, and that stuck lifter then wears down the camshaft lobes and eats into the cam, eventually needing a new lifter and camshaft. I discussed this issue much further in depth in my Eagle Hemi Fatal Flaw video, but many fleet and police vehicles seem to be affected by this, 
So for cop cars specifically, there's a theory that because there is so much idling going on between oil changes, it could explain why this issue is so prevalent on those vehicles that have idled extensively throughout their lives, like police cars or work trucks, rentals, and others. People are all trained to do oil changes based on the mileage, but that doesn't take into account the idle hours or time spent idling, as of course you don't rack up a single mile when you're idling. That means these police cars aren't getting their oil changed frequently enough, and with the enforcement agencies penny pinching or trying to save money on the vehicle costs, they're very likely delaying changing the oil as long as they can. So the oil then can become dirty, breaking down to the point that it no longer lubricates the needle bearings correctly, and causes them to seize. So that's the end of this video guys, thanks for watching and hopefully you enjoyed it. It was the first time where I put together all the info from all the police chargers into one place. So do you have a pursuit charger, and do you think this generation was a little long in the tooth, or had more life left? Let me know down in the comment section below. Make sure to like and subscribe for more Mopar content, and I'll see you in the next video.